This event is recorded and recording will be available at the Tableau community page. For better recording quality, everyone is muted. Please use the QA button to submit your questions. Again, this is a community event. Everyone is welcome to answer any other's questions. The goal is to learn and share from each other. And whoever, uh, if you have tips, tricks that you wanted to share with the community, especially this server or cloud site server admin groups, please reach out to me. Katie and I would love to schedule sessions that you can present, you can share with large community openly. My presentation today is enhancing Tableau data security and governance. Overall, Tableau has pretty robust, pretty comprehensive security. However, nothing's perfect. There are use cases where it depends on your organization, where you will prefer Tableau features can, can be different, um, can be enhanced. In last couple of years, in my organization, we did all those enhancement, or sometimes I call it add-on features, that helped me a lot, helped my organization a lot to have a peace of mind to ensure data not get out of hands. Today, this is the summary of what we did. And hopefully, can give you some ideas what can be done although not everything you have to do. A data security has been everyone's concern. The data leaking, leakage happens every day, everywhere. In my previous company, where we saw some of our customer install base was on sale in the market, our customer install, install base data. And we had to figure out where the data came from. When we got some sample of the data leaking out, those sample, the, temp, the format color looked very, very similar as our BI system. By that time, we're not using Tableau with BI's, other BI system. So it's quite possible that data came out of our BI reporting. Similar things may happen on Tableau server. A data could be leaked from Tableau server. So how do we protect our data on Tableau server? Or you can ask, what if the data is leaked from Tableau server? Who is responsible? Not an easy question. But no matter what, enhancing Tableau server security is important let's dive into that where the recording will be you will find recordings in the tableau admin work user group yeah. there is also a youtube channel if you google it another easy way to find is if you go to my blog site enterprise tableau.com i have a link called server admin tag link you click link it will go there automatically for you now let's dive into the enhancement that we did for our server as reference for you. First, dealing with all users group. No matter you use online cloud, the same thing. I keep using online cloud, the same thing. Or you have own server. Tableau always has a, a special group called all users in every single site. It consists of every single user of the site. Now, what is the problem of you all user group? It's very convenient, actually. All user group is very convenient. Um, and the thing is, you like it or not, the all users group is valuable for every publishers on the, in the site. And every publisher is able to use all user group for the permission. It's very handy 
but can be little problem for me because um, my site has a lot of users, too many users. That we decided we do not want people, we don't want any publishers to use the all users group. Easy to say, but very hard to implement. I try to delete the all user group, I cannot. If I delete, then <laughs> the permission completely messed up. Uh, I, can't, I tried to rename it, it did not work either. So the character of our users group is a built-in Tableau group that is built-in as the way it is. Um, so since I cannot rename, I cannot delete, maybe uh, re renaming is, is available right now, this, at least two, three years back, I couldn't rename it. Um, so how do we avoid people now using it? The only way I figured is that um, I do the after the fact. Again, what is a problem? The problem is our user group has too many users. And very often when people use our user group, they give access permission, means give too many unnecessary permissions to the content. Normal data source workbook, too many unnecessary. A causing um, little concern with data security. So what we um, we can do is do the after after the fact. After fact means all user group is still available for every publisher to use. But if anyone choose our user group for permission for any of the data workbook, data source workbook. We will detect that I have a separate Python program running all the time to detect that. If I found any, we will delay it. We will delay it and we will send email to the account owner. I will show you the email template. But I want to watch, walk you through the steps. We have done many similar things, but Overall, the flow is, is uh, like that. First, pulling the permission table using REST API. Look, permissions of the workbook, data source, flows, metrics, merge connections, and also project there. Look for permissions everywhere to see if any of those permissions associated with our user group. If yes, delete. If you are side admin, if you're a server, ad server admin, yeah, you do have permission to delete any, um, anyways, other permissions. You do have a privilege. Delete, after delete, send an email to the owner. Tell them it's been deleted, why it's been deleted. And this is my true production email messaging. Permission, remove, alert. Show them your permission is removed. This problem is removed because of what, which workbook, which data source, where. Simple. You may say, what if you have some valid, valid user case where you do want to use this user group? Well, you can always have exceptions. So the way I go exceptions goes by project. I can always have a few projects. For example, I'm a server guy. I, I created some server tools for every publisher to use. It's convenience I can I give to all user group, but I publish only to those few projects. So I gave exception to my, my own, my server team's project. You can always give exceptions. All right, this is all user group, the how we deal with this. Uh, we remove the permission every single day. I think every single day, every single hour, I forgot. I think we use it every single day. I think one day is good enough. But you can speed up. It does not take much time at all. Uh, let me answer a quick question. Do you run your AD sync group job in parallel to leave default? I do have a AD group sync. We sync a lot of groups, but AD has nothing to do with our user group. Okay. Our user is our use of the site, of the site. Okay. 
Let me see if anyone has any other quick questions in the QA. I don't see any. Let me, let me move on. When this has been running for, I have this running for a couple of years, been running good. Okay. And then um, a few months ago, I received another messaging. Okay. I received another email from someone saying, hey, why I received this? Why I receive this uh, dashboard, right? Why I see this dashboard? I have nothing to do with this dashboard. We look at it. Yeah, this is uh, um, the workbook permission is not tied to all use group, but a very large group, a very large group. So it's, it's valid, right? It's a very, very large group. The user feedback is why I see this dashboard. And nothing to, to, to do with that. What happened is it's a very large group. So um, we thought about it. Is it valid? However, when there are so many AD groups synced with Tableau Server, the situation is it's not so easy. Actually, it's not easy at all for the publishers to see how many members of that group. If you publish to Tableau Server, when you choose a group, number of, number of members never show up. You never know. Okay, you never know. So it's quite possible that people may choose a wrong group. They wanted to give a smaller group, they end up with giving a very large group. So how do we, how do we avoid that? Well, um, technically I cannot avoid that, right? We cannot avoid that, right? Um, but what I did, few months ago uh, is that I have a new Python scripts. If I found any content, when I say content means what book data source flows, anything, everything, content. Any content has permission to a very large group. And then we will send alert. What it means very large group, you define. We, I think we define as 3000 people. Uh, we're going to change it to 1,000 people. Again, depends on the size of your operation, um, your organization, you decide what's very large for you. The process is like this, similar, very, very similar as our user group process, where we use Python to check permissions everywhere instead of checking at um, check permission for all users. This time we're checking permission for we're counting how many members of the group, okay? Counting how many members group. If more than 1,000, I will send an alert. It, this time we're not removing because it's, because it may be valid. We're not removing, but just reminder people, hey, receive this messaging because the following table of workbook um, is viewed by a very, very large group. I gave a group name, and also I I uh, told told them um, how many count, how many member count, one thousand, five thousand, whatever. Now we also build another feature uh, for this notification because uh, it can be valid. Uh, I don't want them to be bothered again, again, again if it is valid because I'm not deleting this. I just send a reminder. I had to build another feature. Um, if you read the last sentence, once this is done, please click here if you need to deactivate this notification in the future. Even means they have done nothing, they can still click here in the ghost link where it writes something back to my write back database, then in the future we will not send an alert for this particular one anymore. So I don't bother them anymore again. If they didn't do anything, it will the email will be continue sent out again and again. So this is my more like a recent few months ago started alert for large group permission used. Again, it's nothing wrong, but just additional check. I see two questions over there in QA. Let me answer very quick. Sonia, 
if you set the permission for group level, maximum side level permissions, in this case, once AD sync happened, user add again with side level permission. That's fine. Now, once AD is synced, I do sync AD. Correct. At the beginning, there may have the group may have only 500 people, which was not an issue. But later on, become uh, 1,200 people. Then they will receive this email alert. Yes. Question uh, from Hope. We have a workbook published to a server so that publishers can look at and see exactly who is in the group on the server. I love that Hope. You did that awesome. This way they know how large it is and who is in that. You can also look up a single user and see all the groups they are in. Yes and no Hope. The second piece, I, I do not agree with you. Um, you can look up a single user to see all the groups they are in. You are right. You can do that because you are the admin. You are the at least side admin. For regular publishers, they cannot see. Oh, you build that into your workbook. Okay, that's lovely. Uh, when you build that into your workbook, you have a separate workbook, you show the Okay, that's lovely. Awesome. I love that. You have a separate workbook published to everyone so they can see who is in what group. Very good idea. Very good idea. Who is in what group? Okay, got it. I'm trying to learn from you. You have a workbook published on the server so every publisher can see the members of a group. You make that available and who is in what group. Okay, awesome idea. Awesome. Love that. Thank you. Awesome. There's another way that, um, yes, this is awesome. This is another way I uh, can provide info alert to, uh, to people. Awesome. Thank you. Move on. Next one. Hold on. Next one. Another common thing for large Tableau organization, large organization using Tableau is a content owner left company, especially when you have a consultants that are in and out, the building dashboards being used for the while, then left company. So what happens after a content owner left organization? When you have an AD sync, um, then likely your AD sync will unlicense the users. If you don't have AD sync, then the user may still have your license. Okay, that's the problem become worse. Let's say you're able to figure out a way to unlicense users, okay? Um, the content owner is not there anymore, but no matter which side of the road the owner has, licensed or unlicensed, the content still works by design. The dashboard can still be accessed, which is good news, okay? But the problem is that uh, if there is failure for notifications from server, it goes nowhere. It goes nowhere, uh, which also means no actions can be taken by the owner, although the owner is supposed to take action. So how do we help the, the teams to deal with this situation, if that's the case? Uh, based on the feedback, um, the practice like two years ago before we implement this watch is before we implement this Python uh, scripts, we always tell people, hey, when uh, the content owner left the team, left the company, you change the owner, change the content owner. This always, this is still true. Nothing wrong. Should, not nothing. This should still be there. Change the owner. Who can do it? Of course, admins can, uh, project admins can, project owners can as well. Change the owner. But the situation is very often they do not know who are the owner. Or they do not know what other workbooks they have. That's, a, that's very challenging. And also some new project leader may come to you. Hey, I don't know how to, uh, it does not allow me as a project leader to change the owner. It does. It's only, uh, the thing is, if, is someone else workbook. You are the project leader published to your project. To change the owner is two-step process. 
you cannot change directly to you, um, to someone else, sorry. You cannot change it to, from John's to um, Alice. You have to change it yourself, step one, then give to someone else. It's a two-step process. Hope I'm not, not going too quick. Okay. And also when you change the content owner, uh, all the embedded parts were gone, which is a fair. You will have to re-embed your own password. Okay, unless you use public data source. Okay, so it's a two-step process to change the owner. You change it to you and then give to someone else. Twice, say. Now the problem is very often, not only we as admin were not aware of all the content owned by someone, even the project leaders, you know, the project leader even may not have visibility for all the content this person owns. So it may change partially. Maybe the person had 20 workbooks, only, only half got to change it. The rest still uh, remain as invalid owner. So what we did was we write a Python program. This should be simple enough, right? We just email alert send out. Tell the tell the project leaders. It's mainly targeting to project leaders for me for my organization. Okay. Um, in the smaller organization, you may want to target this to um, side endings. Okay. Even serve serve endings. For me, I pretty much federated. Right, to the project leaders. So I send an email to the project leaders, tell them, hey, this content in your project, the owner left the company. Please take action. How do I do that? The flow is also uh, is similar as all the others. Once you know how to do how to do one, the rest of the flow is similar. Again, it's using Python, calling API to get um, to get the, uh, the counter owner. And then number two, this is something um, you have to have. You have to have an AD group that has active employee list. So you can have something compare against. You have to have a, find a way this person is active or not. From Tableau server, you cannot tell. Okay, you got to have a group. This is how I did it. I have a group sync from AD. It shows me all active employees. And then later on, we add one more feature because um, we found out some of the project leaders, they are not um, very responsive for this messaging. So we find out a way to add the previous owner's manager in the alert as well. Now, this is also trickier to find out the previous owner's manager is tricky. Um, hopefully you have some data source you can leverage. And then we found, so we, in our latest uh, email notification for the invalid owner, we have two names, uh, two group of names. One is uh, we give to manager, another one is we give to project admins. Project admins can be multiple people. And this is what we have today. Let me see if there's any other comments, questions around this. Going to the QA. Okay. Let's see if I have any, any comments, questions, concerns. Go to QA, catch up the questions you may have. Um, those ones are into the life already. Hope, thank you. Jeffrey, do you know of an easy way to find everything a user has access? Yes, this is something um, we actually, we create a tool. <laughs> okay, we create a tool. Um, Jeff is asking something else, okay? Uh, There's almost nothing to, to do uh, with uh, the alert we have we're talking today, but Jeffrey was asking, do we have an easy way to find given user what this user's permission for the whole site? Yes, we do have a um, tool. Just again, go to the permission table, build a workbook, that's all. We not only um, find the user, we also are using the same uh, workbook. We can, people can search permissions as well. 
sorry, people can search a group permission as well. Either they can enter username or um, group name, they can find all the workbook data source this user or this group has access. There is a way in the permission table. Just build a workbook based on permissions, can be done. Uh, Rama, can I create alerts using Python script to check the processes are up and running? Like when the background is down and become unlike, or become unless when the background, okay. When the background is down, that's outside Tableau. Some, I believe, yeah, I believe you got to figure out something else. When the person become a like, oh, when the Tableau become a license, maybe this is again, it's not a little bit out, outside Tableau. Okay, it's not something, uh, you can use another tool. Maybe it's Python. Um, maybe others can chime in. I'm not the best for this. This is uh, more on the Tableau platform side. Others can chime in for uh, Rama's question. Rutkin Ren. I may pronounce your name wrong. So far for published data source, we don't need to change the embedded password if owner is changed. Uh, you do, for published data source, if the owner is changed, you do have to re-embed the password this public data source has access, like Oracle. If this public data source uses Oracle, new owner has to re-embed new owner's Oracle password. However, if this public data source has connected workbooks, there's nothing has to be changed for all the connection connected workbooks. Uh, there will. Do you share your Python scripts to chance? This is the one thing I cannot share Python scripts. I wish I can. This is a company's um, 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 asset. I can share exactly how it's done, but I cannot share the script by itself, unfortunately. Kelly, admin, um, how to learn the Python skills in order to be at the level? I don't know. I'm not a Python guy. <laughs> All right, but that's a good, good questions. Those are very, very good questions. Okay, uh, let me move on. Okay, the PII data, which is even harder actually, PII data, okay. Personal identifiable information. Um, there are many examples of PII data, okay. Payment card, SSN, driver license, email, blah, blah, blah. The question is, this is again come to organization policy around your Tableau server or Tableau cloud. Do you allow any PII data on the server? Some large organization may have PII classifications. Which kind of PII data you allow? Which kind of PII data you don't allow? Now, when come to this level, you 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 will have to find a way to identify the PII workbook on Tableau site. How do you identify those? And then how do you governance this? So in my organization, we are going a more complicated way where we we are saying, hey, some PII we can we do not allow. Other PI is okay on our server. This is our current policy. Okay. Driver license DOB is okay on server. However, those data needs to be encrypted if it's extracts. It's okay to on server. I'll, I'll show you how to identify those. Okay, this is very hard. Then others even cannot be on the server at all. There's no way to be on the server. Okay. Again, come to the question. How do we identify those? We all always do this after the fact because I have no way to do it beforehand. Okay, but after the fact is good, is good enough. The first and the most important is find out the PI content. It's very hard. Okay, seriously, very hard. Once you find out, the rest is easier. You can do many things depends on your company's policy. You can tag them. 
you can delete them if you want. You can remove the permission, for example, download permissions. You can alert, you can do many, many other good things. Then the right side is a relative easier, but on the left side, find it harder. Find a PI is hard. Okay, got to use your, um, um, work with your data source team. Yeah, on my server, I have like half data from enterprise data warehouse. The good news for enterprise data warehouse is that there, not only the data is cleaned, aggregated in the data price, in the enterprise data warehouse, but also they have a very good metadata. Tell me which view or which table, which column is which type of PII. My EDW team has done a very good job. So there is such indicator metadata available I can use. So for any data source came from EDW, I can find out easily which table, which column is which PII. And then the rest is within Tableau. I just use Tableau's lineage, find out which workbook use which column, that's all. Straightforward, right? If you follow me. This is a half of my data source. Now I do have other half, like it or not, they are not using EDW data, where there can be an Excel download, it can be just whatever their own data source. How do I find PII in those data source? It's no way for me to scan the Tableau extracts. No way. It will be too slow. It's not scalable. I never scan a database. I never scan the, 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 the extracts. No. So what do we do after talk with the security team, data security team in the company? We think it's good enough. Um, just read the database, whatever database, data source column. Just read the columns. Likely, if it is social security column, that column name should be SSN social security or something. Very often, people do not change the column name. Uh, if they change it, then that's something I cannot do. I cannot detect anymore. So we make assumption that actually is, is uh, pretty much true for most cases. People do not change the column. Because people do not change the column, there is called PII tax zonomy. Okay, tells give me the column name, it tells me which PI it is. I'm using that. So I read the column name, data source column name, then compare against a list of published PII taxonomy. Then I find out this column likely is which type of a PII. I say likely, I'm not 100% sure. Then I go still use some tabular lineage, find out all the workbooks. So these workbooks are likely this type of PI because it's likely. I'm not deleting the workbook automatically, but I'm sending them, when it's the means content owner, workbook owner, a email, ask them confirmation. Okay. So it's two types of data I'm dealing with and probably it's it's also true in your organization. You deal with data source you are very sure has PI or not. They are dealing with other data source, likely PII or not. The likelihood, I would just have owner to confirm. At least as a platform owner, I have a way to detect. I have a way to find out. I have a way to help owners to protect their data better. better. So um as a good citizen now the way i did this is using a flow again um is a data source with a pi classification that's from uh, edw on the left side okay a data source without pi classific classification that is the thing i found out compared to pii 
taxonomy likely I send to user, user come back uh, with inputs, I write to the database. So those are two data sources I'm using for this flow, for the PI detection. And then the rest more straightforward using, using the Tableau metadata, find out which workbook. Okay. Now talk a little bit for, for the metadata. Okay. Yeah, those are tables. The good news is even you do not have Tableau data management add-on. Even you do not have Tableau data management add-on, you can still use the metadata table. All you have to do use your TSM maintenance, just enable metadata service. That's all you have to do. Again, you do not need data management add-on for this feature. It's available for you. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to move on. It's my actual flow. <laughs> Up to here, it's more like yes, my high-level concept. Okay, in the real my real workbook is something like look like this because I have done a few other things on the right side. But I don't don't want to confuse you. It looks like a big workflow. It is big, but on the right side is just uh, um, more like you use case i do a few other things again you don't have to depends your company you don't have to do all of those but the most important is to identify your pi no matter they're from edw or from other data source so you as a server team as a data privacy team as a governance team you will have peace of mind But at the end of the day, uh, today we're able to achieve this feature. We're super highly sensitive data like payment card, SSN. If anyone puts in those type of data onto our Tableau server, we will delete right away because our policy is saying no to this type of data. And I have a mechanism I just showed you to detect those data and delete them. If there is less sensitive data, driver license, DOB, email and the phone number and so on, they are okay to be on Tableau server, but I will force ad tracks to be encrypted. If they're not, this is a simple API I call, encrypt the data source. Well, you may say, why not encrypt everything from the server? Yes, maybe that's a better option. Uh, you, from the whole site, you can encrypt every extract. It does not add much workload on the server at all. Uh, it does not add um, slowness on the workbook either. Only thing is the encryption at this point in time does not work with uh, um, the centralized security um, feature. That's, that's the only thing, uh, virtual connection. No, does not work with virtual connection and the centralized security feature. Otherwise, I would just enforce everything, make it easier. Okay, I uh, got another question coming in from uh, Nitin. With regards to account owner left company, for example, out of 10 users who left the organization, two owns contents. How will a script figure out complexity, determine those two users, send out notifications? Oh, okay. Um, no matter how many uh, left, because um, a way I detect the person left the company is, um, again, I have, a, I have a group on the server, which is all my active employee. Again, this group um, depend on my AD. So I check all the users on the server to see if this person is a part of the active employee group. If not, means this person left the company. And then I found out this person which will book data source this person owns. So this is the list of what book data source I found. Then I found out uh, then I'll find out once I have a list of workbooks this, this uh, person owns, I find out for each of those, the, pro uh, the project leaders. And then um, I send the email to the project leaders plus their uh, the previous manager. 
sounds a little bit complicated, but um, can be done. Again, I have a list of active employees. Once I find out that anyone is not in the list, I find out which content this person owns. That's my logical. All right, I'm going to continue. You can do one more thing. This is also what I did. Um, you can do one more thing. This feature, you will need a um, data management add-on for this feature, where for very, very sensitive data, yeah, even if you don't use Python, people can, can set this as sensitive. That's how I'll show you. Um, if you have a data management add-on, um, you can enable warning, put a sensitive data warning, um, then people will see this pop up and they can see sensitive. Okay, this is a feature out of the box below. If you have not used it yet, it's a data quality warning, enable warning, changing the warning type to be sensitive, enable high visibility. Then you can have, you, then you can achieve this feature. When people, when I say people, means when end user opens the dashboard, there's a pop up. Although I don't like the pop up because it's saying important data quality warning. In this case, it's not really data quality warning, it's sensitive data warning. But you click open details, you can see sensitive data warning. This is out of box tableau. Now, what I did was um, I used this feature, but I used my Python program API to automatically enable warning, select sensitive data, select high visibility, put my messaging for those PII data on the front end. Because I want to show this to the front end. I want the end users, dashboard users to, to know they are looking at a very sensitive data. So don't check this dashboard in the, in the bus station somewhere, right? In the library, don't check this dashboard. Recap, Tableau has comprehensive permissions and comprehensive process, but things can always be enhanced. So the last couple of years, we have done a couple of enhancement to make the data security better and meet our company's requirements for data privacy. We can always have a peace of mind. Um, mainly dealt with our user groups, basically after the fact, delete permissions and very large group, I give them a reminder they are using a very large group. Uh, Hope has a way they can check how many. Yeah, I still I still think even you have a way you publish a workbook, tell them tell them how many members. Uh, when they publish, they may still not remember. We have a lot of groups. Okay, I still think even you provide them with a tool for them to double check the members, how many members of the um, how many members in a group still have this alert to a large group is still helpful doesn't hurt content owners left the company uh, this is something that is uh, handy is well received by the managers by the project leaders because very often they, they may find a few books they may know not all so we'll give them alert and the pii data is a pretty um Pretty relatively big effort to detect PI as a key piece. Um, find a way to be able to detect the PI data on your type of server. That's probably the hardest of this whole thing. And once you are able to detect the PI, you can do many other good things if you want, depends on your organization, which type of things you want to do. Uh, any other questions at this point in time? Now, I'm, I'm sure you no more questions. If that's the case, um, I will dive into one more topic. Some of you may wonder, hey, 
how do you get a buy-in for all those policies that you have on the server? Okay, how do you get a buy-in? <laughs> That's a very, very good question. Well, you need a governance structure for your server. The way I, I do is I have a Tableau governance body. I call Tableau Governance Council in my organization. It has people from different organizations. We sit together, define server governance policy. The model is more like this. You got a champion, uh, myself as a champion for my organization for Tableau. Then we have a governance team together. We meet often, for my case, we meet every single week. Some other organizations meet every single, single month. Then we define the things to, to do, plan, do it, then validate, do it. And then um, the next things coming, we continue this PDC cycle. It's more like, this is how many of those things came. This is a word that came, actually. Um, came, is approved. Then we just make it, make it happen together. All right, I'm going to test your understanding a little bit. I have 10 more minutes. Uh, can we delete or hide all user groups? Some, I wish, I wish the answer is yes. If anyone knows how to do that, let me know. For me, the answer is no. When you send the content, um, you invite the content owner, you learn. How do you avoid same email to be sent out again, 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 again? You gotta give them a way for them to opt out. Okay, there is a way. Do I need data management add-on for me to find out lineage? No, that's very good news. It's available for everyone. Even you don't own the data management add-on module. Just use TSM maintenance to enable meta metadata services. Dashboard user notification. This is for end user only, okay? Uh, PI taxonomy. Is this accurate enough to detect PI? Well, it is accurate as long as the account owner does not change column name. If they change the column name, it's a different story, which is why um, I want the account owner to confirm the account is a PII or not. All right, that is all I have today. And let's see if anyone has any other further questions. If you want to go back to check this, uh, always available uh, in after this, go back. It's always available in the recording. I'll show you where to get it. Show you again the link where you can get a recording. The link is maybe the best way for you to get a link is go to my website, enterprisetableau.com, click the server admin tab. You can also get it from here. This is a little bit longer link, but I'll post it into the chat. Any other questions, anyone? Um, hope to everyone. That is exactly TSM comment on the slide. Thank you. Yeah, it is, it is exactly the comment. I think you are looking for this one. Uh, yeah, you're looking for this one. This is exactly the comment. Yeah. If you have not done this yet. Enable TSM. Um, Raj, can at least two, three examples policies you implement with the governance committee, with the governance committee, what do you mean? Uh, governance committee, this is what examples we did, okay? If we find any high sensitive, we delete them right away. 
high sensitive delete right away and uh, for sensitive encryption enforced also we do not want people to delete uh, sorry we do not want people to have download permission if any permission with download we remove the download permission immediately and we tag them this is a policy we have in our company raj i don't know if this is what you're asking for Now this is good stuff. Actually, I also uh, shared this, what we did with um, the data privacy, data security with the Tableau dev team. Um, they know that um, many of those features is probably a couple of years away from what Tableau would have out of box because it's very hard for Tableau as a software vendor to identify those data, for example. Um, it's, very, it's not easy for Tableau to, to identify the invalid content owner either. How do they know how Tableau server knows which person is invalid? Not easy. So this is something that uh, is more practical for you to do it by yourself. Uh, one more question came. How can we send an email to all users notify the change about some report on Tableau server? You want to send an email to all users? Um, Yeah, you want to send the email to all users. Um, I also send, I, I find out, okay, um, I got a couple of ways to send to all users. One is um, um, we create a group. We create a separate group. Um, actually, all users are too many for me. Um, I create a separate groups. Um, I found out all the active content owner group. I look at all my con all the content on my server. Look at get the owners automatically, right? Using the Python, get the owners, and then you put the owners into the group. So that is group. Um, I even put this group in the AD. That is group we will use to send the email to. So I send normally to the active content owners only. Uh, unless you want to send to the dashboard owners, there, there will be too many. Very often they have nothing to do with many of the things. I try to avoid to send to the um, end users. I only send to the content owners. The way for me to identify the content owners is go by a list of content. Who owns that? Any other questions? Okay. Nitin also saying he's doing this for active users. Out of box tab below, I don't think there is a way for you to send an email from Tableau server to all user groups. I don't think so. I'm not aware of that. Any other comments, questions, anything? Again, this is a community event. Uh, if, if anyone, um, you have a tips, tricks, you think you did, it worked well for your organization, let's share it. Please reach out to me, um, Mark Wu, 2000 at the gmail.com. I'm happy to organize event for you so you can share with others. Mark Wu, 2000 at the gmail.com. Any other comments, questions? If not, I guess everyone will get three minutes earlier back. Thank you so much for being with me and have a great weekend. Enjoy it, have a look.